Welcome to Zwift Live and welcome back to the Z Pro Tri June Invitational Series. And here we are. It's the final race in the series and the final chance for someone to shake up the GC. And what a final stage it is. None other than the Alp de Zwift. Our field of the best athletes on the planet are about to take on the hardest climb in Zwift. And it's going to be explosive and brutal. Let's get ready to see some pain faces today. I'm Matt Lieto and joining me is ex-pro triathlete and Zwift expert, Sean Jefferson. How's it going, Sean? Hey, Matt. Great to be here today and really looking forward to seeing these athletes race up the Zwift, race up Alp the Zwift. Uh, first off, how excited are you to not be racing up the Alp yourself? I think I've done the Alp three times in the last week. A fourth would just probably kill me. <laughs> so what do you think about today's course? What... Uh, Who's going to, who's going to break away? Is it who can break away? Yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be a solo effort out there today. We might see a couple of quick attempts early on, but once they get to this Alp to Zwift, it's going to be every man and every woman for themselves all the way to the top with Watts per kilogram being the highest, uh, highest one today. And we'll take, we'll really decide the winner. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I mean, obviously that sustained climb is going to be who can uh, afford to put that uh, high power out for the longest period of time. Well, first, we've got the men up. Um, but before we get into the action, they're actually out on course already. Let's take a look at what down what went down last week in the Innsbruck race and how the GC standings are going into this last and final stage. Large groups stay together for the majority of the men's race. We see a couple of gaps opening in the back, one and a half to two seconds. They want to close that down ASAP. With every twist and turn came a new attack. Kenneth Vandedrice, Joe Skipper, with none of them managing to stay away. A bunch of arrow power-ups getting used as they're 200 to go into the sprint. Lionel Sanders got his wheel right in front. The leg snapper played his part on every lap. A lot of the featherweights being deployed. And with legs tiring, David McNamee, Braden Curry, and Christian Blumenfeld took off in three successive attacks. Christian Blumenfeld uses a ghost to get a little bit of a gap with 1.5k to go. Then, Anthony Costas went screaming past them all in an attempt to go long. Costas is now coming across to Blumenfeld, but he could not hold on. It's the dark horse from Canada. At the line, it was Jackson Landry who took home the upset win. Amazing performance, super well timed. He just followed wheels and timed it to perfection, just getting the win. With one race left in the series, Lionel Sanders, James Kunima, and Mike Phillips lead the GC standings. And as the road heads for the sky, the question has to be can anyone push Lionel off the top spot? Yeah, Sean, some great racing last week. Was that what you expected? I mean, I know that that course, you never really know it's going to break up. Maybe it's going to come to a, a sprint finish. But was were you expecting Jackson Landry to come away with a win last week? I was not expecting Jackson to come away with that win. Great effort by him. Um, the leg snapper definitely played its role, really sapped the, the power out of some of our sprinters' legs. And we saw Jackson capitalize on it and really time his sprint perfectly, taking the win right at the tape. Yeah, there you go. Good call. And so as we see on screen here, our GC standings, it, it's still there. There were some shakeups that, you know, having Anthony Costas go for that sprint early lost him a lot of points last week, Sean. So he has a much bigger gap, I think, than he was expecting to have uh, on uh, behind Lionel Sanders going into this last stage. What do you what do you see that what, what stands out to you on that GC standings? Yeah, I mean, currently we, we saw Lionel all, all race series going for those intermediate points, and that's really what's put him at the top of the GC standings. But the sprinters have really shown early, early on with James Cunema and Mike Phillips coming through really strong in races one through three. Today is going to be a totally different race. Look for Lionel Sanders, Anthony Costas, you know, someone like Aaron Royal and Allie Brownlee to really shake things up today on this long, sustained climb. Yeah, speaking of this long climb, let's take a look at today's course and format and uh, see what's uh, in store for the riders this week, Sean. Yeah, so we're, we're in Watopia, Tour of Fire and Ice, uh, which finishes up the Alp. 
We've got a 28K race, 17 miles long, um, over 1,000 meters of climbing. So that's all primarily done on the Alp. And it's going to be 21 hairpin turns all the way to the top, 12 kilometers from the start of the Alp up to the finish. And it's an average grade of 8%. Look, things to look out for really here. No intermediate sprint points, no intermediate points at all. It's really just who gets the top first with three places at the top earning extra bonus points. First is another 10 points of 40 points for the total win. Second, six points. And then third, we'll get an extra two points across the finish line. Yeah, there you go. It's going to be a tough race for sure. A lot of climbing and, and for some people, a little longer lead in uh, than most of us, uh, at least that I do when I uh, just want to get up the Alp in training. So uh, the athletes are out on the lead in going into uh, the Alp as we speak. So we're going to join the race that is already uh, going. Sean, does it look like that group has split up a little bit already? It does look like there's a couple of athletes that have might might have fallen back. So this is the interesting point with um, the race today. We're not just going up the Alp. We've got a we've got a 10 mile lead in before we even get to the base of the Alp with a little climb up the epic beginning part of the epic reverse KOM. So. Some athletes may have already been hit, and it looks like two to three have been already are already off the back of this pack. We've got most of the contenders still in there: Lionel Sanders, Braden Curry, Ali Brownlee up front. But um, we'll see if there's any more tactics. They've got a little bit of a climb here before they get to the actual climbing. So uh, we'll see if anyone's aggressive early on and tries to whittle the group down before we even get to the Alp. Yeah, no, there as we see there, there's some athletes getting kind of spit out the back at the moment already. Uh, it does look like Matt Russell uh, has been dropped out of this main group. Uh, he's 27 seconds uh, back, and it does look like David McNamee is also back there with Jared Brown. Uh, so those those three athletes uh, have popped off the back. It looks like Mike Phillips had some trouble early, and he's uh, two and a half minutes back. So a bummer for someone so high in the GC uh, to be chasing this far in, but he's going to look to try to bring some people back once the sustained climb goes. And Sean, is this race a little bit different compared to the ones we've had before where if you get dropped you're not going to move up any places is it a chance that there's going to be some massive explosion so if you get dropped early you might be able to move back yeah i mean it's it is a 30 i'm going to say 36 to 38 39 minute climb for these athletes so if you know mike phillips who had some sort of technical issue at the beginning if he can manage that time and really smash the alp he could claw back some of those uh, 30, 20, 30 seconds, uh, maybe up to a minute, minute and a half, if he's got a really good day. But um, yeah. yeah, once once you hit the Alp, there's there's no draft effect. So it's really about just high watts per kilogram and what you can sustain for 35 plus minutes. Yeah, yeah, good call for sure. And news, other kind of unfortunate news, our second in GC athlete, James Kunima, who's been really given huge effort to the series, had, uh, he's in South Africa and he said he had some internet issues this morning and unfortunately uh, could not join the race so big big bummer for for james but all the athletes and, and certainly those watching as you know, someone that's put that much effort and had such a great series so far not to be a part of this final stage i know he was gearing up for it so huge bummer to hear that yeah and that's really going to shake up the finish of the gc standings with both kunama and mike phillips looking like he's got some issues back two and a half minutes at this point um, it really puts Costas in a, in the driver's seat to really make an attack at Lionel. And before the race started, I kind of had this idea of Lionel and Costas really battling it out on the Alp, and it looks like it's even more so going to happen now. Yeah, no, I think you're, I think you're right. And uh, we talked to Lionel about the series and his his thoughts uh, going into this race series. And uh, I think I think we've got some of those for you before we hit the before we hit the Alp. But right now on screen, we've got Matt Hansen, Tim Reed comfortably in the group, uh, pushing the pace of the front. Nothing too crazy right now. Four and a half watts per kilo uh, for Tim Reed as he goes uh, around the front of the group. Again, we do have those dropped athletes, Matt Russell, David McNamee, and Jared Brown. Uh, looks like they're grouping up, so they're going to do their best to kind of ride as a group till they get into uh, into the out and maybe uh, kind of limit their losses there, Sean. 
Yeah, yeah. Definitely a good strategy there is before we hit their climbing. So yeah, let's uh we got Lionel on screen here. Let's listen to what Lionel had to say about uh, this series and what he's looking forward to with today's stage. When I saw that the series had preliminary points, I figured you could just because they were weighted so heavily relative to the the increments for standings at the end of the race, I figured you could actually win the race without or the, the tournament without actually ever winning any race. There's only one race I wanted to win when I looked at all four of these races and it was the Alp de Zwift. A piece of me would just like to make it really hard all the way to the top because I feel like I feel like all these races have been a lot of guys have been able to survive because the efforts have only been three like three and a half minutes is the biggest effort thus far. Yeah definitely a little bit different effort uh, a little bit longer than three and a half minutes they're going to have uh, today going up the Alps, Sean. For sure. It's, I mean, even they've probably already done a good three and a half minutes just on this first climb today. So they're going to have a good 35 plus minutes up the Alp. So a lot of pain, a lot of suffering. Um, it's going to be great to see some of those picture in picture videos of their pain face while they're hurting going up the Alp today. There you go, Sean. So we're almost, we're getting pretty close to the base of the Alp. Is there anything left? Uh, on this course, uh, you said you've ridden it three times already this week. That's that could. Is there anything left that maybe somebody could throw an attack in, or could uh, surprise some athletes or catch any athletes off guard? No, no. I mean, I think at this point on the uh, jungle loop, so they are riding through dirt now. It is a little bit harder of an effort. The draft effect is a little less. The thin tires on the dirt don't don't work as well and don't roll as easy. So. Even though they're trying to draft in a pack, it still feels a little harder than it normally would be if you're on the road. And, and they're so close to the Alp, I, I think it'd be a little bit of a last minute ditch effort just to get a couple, you know, five, 10, 15 second head start if anyone does want to make a move at this point. Yeah, that'd be a, a real big match to burn before uh, getting to the base of the Alp, which is certainly going to be the big uh, challenge for today. But looks like the group is all together, kind of settling in right now. I think uh, everybody's shaking those legs out, getting ready for uh, the uh, little jaunt up the Alp. And Sean, you know, everybody talks about their PRs, kind of what maybe what their Strava segment uh, time, their best time is up the Alp. We're looking at uh, Lionel Sanders uh, here on screen. Uh, he, you know, hinted to me that he, you know, he thinks, you know, 36, 37 minutes is, is probably about where they're going to be. The rumor is that he's done 38 in a training session with, uh, you know, while doing intervals. So what do you think is realistic and uh, does it actually matter the time or is it going to be, like you said, a tactics situation? I mean, for Lionel, the time doesn't really matter. He just wants to be first across the line. I think he's just got a good idea of what he's done previously and what he probably can hold going up this, up this climb. As you see, we're just getting ready to start. They'll come up around this turn. They'll hit a hit the um, base of the Alp with the, the flashing lights on the bottom, and then it kind of kicks up really quickly. This is a very hard climb, uh, eight and a half percent all the way to the top, but a lot of the climbing is done at nine, 10, 11 percent grades. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it, so here we go. We see them uh, officially at the start of the climb. And Sean, I feel like the first section always catches me off guard. Is that just because it's flat or is this first section a little bit steeper uh, than some of the rest of the Alp? I think it's just so much. It's, it is, I mean, we get a lot of steep parts on the Alp, but the first section yeah. is just consistently steep. It's the way we see right now, 10%, and it doesn't really lighten up for a while. So, I mean, it's, it's no surprise who's, got, who's up front already between Kenny Vanderjeis and Allie Brownlee. I expect them to be aggressive at the start of this race. Um, it's really about settling in after the first five or eight minutes and then maintaining that high power and consistent power all the way to the top. But Brownlee, aggressive early. Yeah, I mean, I think Brownlee has a little bit something to prove. He hasn't maybe had the series that he was hoping for as far as getting those wins and being super far up in the GC standings uh, going into this last stage. So he's, he's trying to prove a point here. He's spreading it out. I mean, already the top 20 is separated by six seconds, Sean. So uh, no doubt Alistair is blowing this race apart. Yeah, it's, I mean, this is mostly a solo effort. It's great to have a rider next to you or if you be in a small group just to have that kind of carrot um, to continue to chase or really stick with. But really, once they're at 10% grade on the Alp, there's, there is no draft effect. These guys are 
it's really just watt per watt, and um, we're going we're gonna to see a very solo, long, lonely effort for a lot of these riders today. Yeah, there you go. We got uh, Vander Dreis, who is down for a long solo effort. Very slight build on Kenneth uh, Vander Dreis, and, and he's one that has a bunch of power in his legs as well. A uh, tall, lanky athlete that certainly is built to go uphill pretty well. So he's right on the heels of Alistair Brownlee with none other than Lionel Sanders sitting comfortably. And, Sean, I, you know, I, I think I think Lionel, obviously, he wants to win this stage, and he wants to kind of prove something to a certain extent. But I also think he's he's happy to sit on wheels for the first little bit. Yeah, I mean, he, he may just end up looking at Costas because he knows he's, uh, at this point, the next closest rider to him on the GC standings and make sure he's comfortable enough just following Costas' wheel. doesn't get out too hard, too aggressive. He can let someone like Brownlee ride off the front because um, he really won't factor into the GC points. But if he just watches Costas and rides accordingly, uh, I mean, that, that seems like the most uh, prudent tactic today but we'll 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 see how Lionel goes you know he wants to win this one and he's going to be aggressive probably no matter what yeah prudence isn't always number one uh, <laughs> priority for Lionel Sanders uh, he just loves pain I think himself and I think uh, even more than that he likes putting others in pain this is a great shot as we see the group getting blown apart it looks like they're settling into two main groups here Sean with uh you know about three seconds separating to a second group that's got Ronnie Schulneck, Tim Don, Philip Graves, Tim Reed, and Tim Van Berkel in it with Joe Skipper uh, trying to get back up there. But this front group has Alistair Brownlee, Kenneth Vanderdrys, Lionel Sanders, Anthony Costas, Braden Curry, Jackson Laundrie, our surprise winner from last week, Johnny Brownlee, so uh, maybe a teammate there for uh, Alistair who's pushing the pace up front, or maybe he's working for his brother, who knows. Uh, and then Sepp Odin is the last in that group with uh, Ben Canute, Schumann, Hansen, and Troutman kind of caught in the middle trying to catch back up. Yeah, and we saw we saw Lionel doing a bunch of uh, KOM uh, attempts earlier this year on Mount Lemon in Tucson, Arizona, where he trains, and he had to do it two or three times because someone went over and took his KOM, and he just went back the next week and took it again. So he's He's definitely been doing some longer sustained uh, KOM attempts, and that's really the type of training and racing you're going to need for a ride like today's uh, today up the Alp. Yeah, no, great point, great point, Sean. And I think yeah, he definitely is one that loves that sustained effort. I think he 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 was saying in the interview that I did with him earlier this week that he was able to focus a little bit more on these short, hard efforts that he needed to try to get those sprint points uh, for the series. Uh, but certainly he's going to be able to kind of fall back on what his strength is, which those, uh, which are those long sustained efforts. So certainly, uh, certainly going to do well today. We see some power ups getting burnt uh, behind Alistair Brownlee and Sean. You know, let's talk about power ups for a second. How important? You know, we know power ups are extremely important for for the race in general for this this series. But on the Alp, how much effect are the power ups, and which power ups are the athletes going to want to grab? Yeah, I mean, the, the really the only one you want today is the featherweight. Um, even those double drafts are really not going to do anything once you're hitting, you know, percent grade to 14 percent. You're not you're not going at a fast enough speed to actually even use the draft effect. So it's it's really all about lightweight today, the featherweight and using those either when you need a little bit of rest, that 15 second just to sit in and try to recover. Or if you're launching an attack and really want to use that extra um, 9.5 kilograms off your weight to make a la to launch an attack or really get away from somebody and try to sustain it to the finish. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a good point for sure. And I think, uh, yeah, everybody's going to be crossing their fingers uh, or, or praying for the feather weight anytime we get a new power up. But Sean, Alistair Brownlee is, he's committed. He's at the front. He's not letting anybody else take a turn. And it's working it, right now. He actually it looks like they just shed Jackson Laundry, uh, and Johnny Brownlee actually is off the back too. So we've got a small group that's just Alistair, Lionel Sanders, Anthony Costas, and Kenneth Vandedrys, uh, and Braden Curry still in the front. You know, we sat down earlier this week with Anthony Costas and talk about uh, talk to him about his chances for this uh, race and kind of his tactics going into this final stage and his chances of upending Lionel Sanders. I think first place he is 
is to lose because uh, I think we have a 20 points difference. So if I win, he has to finish uh, 10th or 11th. So I'm not sure that's going to happen. So my goal is mostly going to be to to get back on the podium. So I have to beat uh, um, uh, James Kunama and Mike Phillips. And uh, so yeah, and uh, have a difference between them and me. So <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Uh, take a few guys with me and <laughs> drop them and put them between me and Mike and Mike and James. Yeah. Yeah. So you heard it there from Anthony. He's going to be obviously he's not going to be stoked to, to hear others had maybe some bad luck, but those athletes that he needed to jump to get back into the podium, uh, they're already out of contention. So now he can focus on the athlete that he needs to beat uh, in this race to win the overall. And it is Lionel Sanders who has now gone around. Alistair Brownlee, Sean, and he's taking a poll, and now it's the three. I don't know that I necessarily expected Alistair Brownlee to be this far up. Maybe I just overlooked. I probably should have expected that. But we, we've got three men on a breakaway with three and a half seconds to Braden Curry and Kenneth Vandedrace. Yeah, I mean, Ali had a mechanical last week during the race and didn't contend, so he's a little further down the GC standings than we probably expected. Um, but I think if you know anything about the Brownleys and especially Alistair, he's phenomenally strong on the bike. When, when they had the ITU WTS race in Kitzbühel a couple of years ago, it was a mountaintop finish. Ali just smashed everybody up the climb and then just cruised away on the run to easily take the win. So not surprising that he, um, he gets to the base of this climb and is aggressive and can actually push it and be you know, up with Lionel and Costas. It's definitely to be expected. Yeah, and I'm looking at these watts right now, Sean, and it looks like Lionel Sanders, and he's getting a little bit of a gap. It looks like he's putting in some digs. Like, they're settled in to these six watts per kilo, uh, five and a half, six watts per kilo, and then every once in a while you see Lionel Sanders jumping above six and a half, seven. You know, that could just be him getting out of the saddle around the corners up some steeper uh, little gradients, but he's definitely putting a little bit of hurt on those other two in his group i don't think alistair is necessarily content with riding this group of three all the way to the top no and this the, the hard part about the alp is all the switchbacks the hairpin turns you you know the percent grade will switch from eight nine ten percent down to two percent so you really got to be on top of the gears really prepared for those either you're getting out of the saddle to push or mostly inside on a trainer you're really just using the gears to try to estimate or calibrate where you need to push power and how you want to push it. So guessing the RPMs coming into a turn is, is a little tough and a little difficult here. So it could be just that, you know, Lionel has just put it onto a low gear and is really just grinding away even through the turns and making some of those gaps when the, when the incline drops. Well, it looks like he's able to do that better than everybody else. Uh, or he's he's finally uh, gotten that elastic to snap. And it does look, Sean, that uh, Lionel Sanders has been able to gap those chasers, but now it's a group of three. Uh, Braden Curry has gotten up to Anthony Costas and uh, Alistair Brownlee. So those three for the moment at least, although it seems like Braden Curry is kind of off and on that group of three as they try to react to Lionel Sanders. But right now, as the gradient uh, evens out a little bit, it looks like Alistair Brownlee has found a little bit of a second wind. He's now under two seconds down from three. Uh, so they are trying to get back to Lionel Sanders and not willing to give him this queen stage of our Z Pro Tri Invitational quite yet, Sean. Yeah, and that's it's a long way out still. We're we're only on coming up to turn 14, so we're still well over halfway to go up the Alp. Um, it's nice to have somebody to ride with, even if you're just constantly chasing, trying to keep pace and maintain pace. So you might just see Allie trying to get back up to Lionel, really try to grab onto the back of his wheel, and even if he's not getting a draft effect, just use it as motivation to stay close, stay in it, and really try to push across for the win today. Yep, yep, and they are uh, they are bridging up as we speak, but let's look a little bit further down on the other athletes that are around there. We've got Kenneth Vanderdrys is in fifth place right now, 19 seconds back. Ben Canute having a great race here on screen with Braden Curry, who's trying to bridge up to uh, Anthony Costas and Alistair Brownlee. And now we've got kind of our chase group there with Johnny Brownlee is in this group. This is a, actually a nice little group, Sean, that might be able to kind of work together, so to speak, uh, to be able to bring uh, some of those riders in front of them back. Ben Canute, for sure, having the best race uh, he's had so far in this series, sitting in 
sixth place and, and this is I think the kind of effort that suits Ben really well. He's with Jackson Laundry, who's looking to try to find his way up into the podium today as well as Seth Odin and Johnny Brownlee. So uh, do, do we think, Sean, obviously there's a tiny bit of advantage uh, you know, you still get a little bit of a draft, especially on these flatter sections. But is it is there a sense of camaraderie with these four athletes? Like, hey, let's work together. Will we see some messages if you're in game? These guys trying to hype each other up. I don't know if we'll see any messages, but uh, there's definitely I think there's some camaraderie. You get around, you get into a pack of four and it, it may even just be a mental thing of I don't want to lose this group. I don't want to lose this pack of four. I want to stay connected all the way to the top. And we see Ben here working really hard out of the saddle, pre still pressing nice uh nice work there and um really just trying to stay within this group of four he's with it's it is a strong pack and a lot of these athletes will have a different strategy on how they go up the alp maybe you know these guys weren't really concerned with the win they want to just be as high as they can at the finish beyond the podium um, so ben may not have taken that first uh climb or, or first turn or two as hard as the uh guys up front like lionel alley and um, costas yeah, and I think I think that's a great point, Sean. It, it, and it would make sense for those athletes that necess that haven't necessarily been doing that great in the one to three minute really hard efforts that you've had to to go through uh, to get through the series well. That they wouldn't force themselves to do that at the beginning of this climb. And uh, sorry, as we as we talk about that, it does look like Lionel Sanders uh, has been bridged back up to. So Alistair Brownlee and uh, Anthony Costas are on the wheel of Lionel Sanders. Let's see if Lionel Sanders, he gets, he's now in third position. Uh, see if they soften up a little bit. Maybe they rest and start looking over his shoulder, realizing that, yes, the, the goal is to get up the Alp theoretically as fast as possible, but the goal is to get there by yourself. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Sean, but I'm guessing these guys don't want to have to sprint at the end of the Alp. <laughs> no, and it, the Alp does flatten off just a little bit. Um, so there is, if there is a group together, there is a little bit of a sprint point, but it's it's mostly going to come down to who's got the most watts right to the top of the finish. I mean, the last part of this course is so hard, and um, you really don't have anything left anyway to do a, a real sprint in, in terms of uh, like we've seen the last couple of weeks. So this is a great shot of Braden Curry. Uh, bright and early, not so bright. That's a window out the back, not a... TV that's been turned off so it's uh, still real early in the morning there uh, for Braden Curry he's working hard he's hoping as he saw sometimes uh, your best uh, partner your best uh, you know you have some assistance when athletes in front of you bridged up and they kind of group together because you hope that they slow down and kind of settle in and look at each other so he right now is really hoping that the fact that Alistair Brownlee and Anthony Costas have bridged up to Lionel Sanders that they're going to soften the pace there for a little bit to give him enough time to get back to him as you see him absolutely cranking Sean getting in and out of the saddle absolutely pushing the pace so Braden Curry really trying to bridge back up he's not settling in at, as far as I can see he's not settling in necessarily to his own pace yet he's still trying to to chase back and is separating himself from Kenneth Vanderdrys who is in fifth position behind him and then Ben Canute has actually separated himself from that group that we were uh, watching and talking about a little bit earlier. So he now has 10 seconds on Johnny Brownlee, Jackson Laundry, and Sepp Oden. Yeah, you saw Braden Curry working really hard there. Definitely looks like more of an effort to bridge across than to just kind of maintain yeah. his position. He is dangling kind of in no man's land between that first group and uh, Kenny Vanderjice who's sitting behind him. And then, like you said, all the way back to Ben Canute. But all of those athletes, the top six athletes, are all within a minute of each other at this point. So um, it doesn't look like Braden's making much headway there. But uh, Alistair on the front really pushing the pace and uh, setting a nice tempo for Lionel and Costas. Yep, absolutely are. And here we go. We're, uh, we are cruising. And it looks like it's settled down a little bit. So here's a uh, you know, 5% gradient. Uh, out of 3% out of that corner, Sean. So a little time for them to, to settle in and group up again. But it does look uh, like Anthony Costas is where he wants to be right now. I think uh, he'd be happy to know that he's with uh, the best riders in the field today with Alistair Brownlee. I think he might have hoped that Lionel Sanders woke up on the wrong side of the bed today and was about 15 places behind him so he could take the <laughs> overall. But that's not the case uh, here so far today. Lionel Sanders looks like he's on form. So... Anthony Costas has 
probably little to no hope of winning the overall uh, standings just because he needs to finish. I believe he even said that it was 10 spots ahead of Lionel uh, Sanders for him to be able to, to take home the win. But I think now he's going to try to to make sure he gets the win on the stage and uh, will be happy enough with a second place in the uh, in the final standings if he if he does that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's it's the best way to go today. Try to get the overall win on the Alp. Try to just beat Lionel on the day because uh, as long as Lionel continues to do what he's doing, he would have to drastically fall off to fall outside of the top 10 um, and lose the GC standings from Costa. So really good, uh, good efforts here, both Lionel and Costa knowing what they needed to do and uh, showing up on the day to actually do it. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, uh, easier said than done, and you have to show up, as you said, on the day and, and put down that big effort. And Alistair Brownlee, he's really, really wants a stage here. I think he's an athlete that loves racing on Zwift and hasn't necessarily had the best of luck so far and maybe maybe not the best legs on every race. Um, and today it looks like he has good luck and good legs at this point. Jackson Landry, our surprise Winner from last week leading this group that has uh, Sepp Odin and Johnny Brownlee in it with him. They're chasing Ben Canute. They're about 20 seconds behind. Surprise winner from last week. Uh, I was super stoked to see him uh, have such a great result. He's going to move up a few amount of uh, spaces today, uh, spots today, maybe finishing on the podium depending on where Aaron Royal ends up finishing. But we sat down and talked to Jackson just about racing the series in general and kind of those other athletes that he's able to rub elbows with. I'm still hoping to come into the top five, so I'm going to have to have a really good day on Alpha Zwift, but um, definitely encouraging that I've gotten better each week. So uh, next week, I'm just hoping to get into the top five. I know there's some guys who are really, really strong on like the long climbs, and I've kind of gotten my best results on the sprints, so it's going to be a bit of a different day for sure, but it's, I mean, it's awesome just to be in the top 10 and be racing with these like, crazy good athletes. There you go. It's been great to see Jackson uh, improve every week as it goes by. He's one that takes this racing very seriously and does his homework for sure and is stoked to be a part of it. And I did uh, chat to him last week, and he, he had a, a bit of a posse with him when he got his win last week in the room and it, where uh, his uh, Zwift setup was, and uh, it went wild to say the least. So hopefully he's got some more support there. Maybe everybody holding the fan today because this stage is no doubt pretty brutal. So big news up front. As we were away, Lionel Sanders and Anthony Costas, kind of who we assumed uh, it would end up being, they are side by side pushing the pace up the Alps, separating themselves from all of the other athletes. Yeah, and it looks like Lionel or Alistair has had a uh, dropout or something. He's, he's, he's at zero watts per kilogram, um, not moving, consistently following back, falling back and down this uh, leaderboard right now. So see if that can get fixed and he can get back in it and kind of maintain that top five position. But definitely um, interesting with Lionel um, going to the front now and really pushing the pace. Costa just settling in, uh, doing a good job uh, staying on his wheel. But yeah, super bummed for Allie. That's, uh, he's down to fifth at this point. Yeah, that's, uh, that's brutal. That's heartbreaking for sure. So unfortunate for Alistair Brownlee. He's the one that kind of animated this race early and as soon as his watts get back online 6.0 so he's back and uh, no doubt he's going to try to find himself right back in the middle of the field uh, once he gets a stable uh, internet uh, that dropout as a, was a brutal one for for Alistair but he's still sitting in fifth position so Vander Dreis is now in fourth uh, they Vander Dreis excuse me has linked up with Braden Curry uh, so those two athletes are 36 seconds back now working together. As it looks like on screen, Lionel Sanders is trying to shake Anthony Costas. Yeah, and they're, they're well over halfway now. It looks like they're into turn eight. So eight more hairpins before they go up to the final part of the uh, KOM banner. And there's a little daylight there. It gets a little softer on the grades here. You know, instead of seeing those 10, 12 percent, it even though we're seeing it right now, it will drop down to a little more consistently in the 6 to 8% range for the next couple. So if this is a spot where um, Lionel can really just lay down the power and really maintain that nice 
strong effort he's been doing, I think um, he could pull away here, and it seems like he is getting a little more distance, up to two and a half seconds to cost us. Yeah, absolutely, and it's uh, it's cool looking at some of their data, their heart rate uh, separated by one beat uh, a minute, so they're both working pretty darn hard, but it does look like Anthony Costas is getting gap now, 3.2 seconds, so a fair bit of daylight uh, going between Lionel Sanders and Anthony Costas, and Lionel is going to be able to settle in. He'll probably keep pushing to make sure that elastic breaks, but once he gets at about 5 to 10 seconds, I think he'll be able to kind of settle in and do his own effort um, maybe I shouldn't use the word settle when we're talking over six <laughs> watts per kilo, Sean. Yeah, especially he doesn't look like he's settling. He's out of the saddle. He's pushing. <laughs> he's grunting. He's got the sweat going. He's really riding hard at 438 watts, um, 6.3 watts per, sec per kilogram. And he's using the featherweight power up to even extend it more. So he's, he's really pushing for the finish. And really, this is his move to try to win um, up the Alp today and separate himself from Costas good for good. Yeah, no, he is. Uh, he's he's almost at about five seconds right now. As he hits nine percent, uh, he gets out of the saddle, pushing that six watts per kilo. Just again, they're now through turn eight, coming up on turn seven. Uh, so def not too much longer. I mean, it, it's see, for me, that's an eternity. For these guys, it's not going to be that long, Sean. But so they're twenty-two minutes in. It's going to be a, a pretty fast time up the out. Yeah, and some, some of these turns, are, uh, they're not all the same distance, so you get to a couple of them where, like, this it, turn seven is one of the longest in the last, in the last uh, final few. So you got a couple, like, long turns. Some of them are two and, a half, two and a half minutes long. Well, the majority of the hairpins from seven up to the finish are in that one and a half to two minute mark. So Lionel really trying to maintain and push across this uh, turn seven and get up and really uh, extend the lead, and he's doing just that, seven and a half seconds to cost us. Yeah, keeps uh, keeps spreading out that distance. We see Costas able to settle in now. Wow, Sanders over seven watts per kilo in this segment here. So now he's pushing over. That gap is going to start really opening up between him and Anthony Costas as he uh, pushes again over seven watts per kilo. So it's 10 seconds now. And the real question is going to be, Anthony Costas doesn't really need to worry anymore. He's not going to move any spaces uh, or spots further back in the GC if he loses some more uh, spaces in this finish today. But, uh, you know, pride is one thing, and I'm sure he's going to want to finish second behind Lionel Sanders. He needs to make sure that he doesn't go too deep into the well trying to stay with Lionel where he can't then just continue to uh, sustain a high effort on his own for the remainder because he's got about 50 seconds to Kenneth Vanderdrys chasing from behind. Yeah, he's he's comfortably in second um, at this point. It doesn't look like he's going to make a, a surge back up to Lionel unless Lionel kind of cracks at some point. But I doubt that's happening. He's been up this climb so many times. And as we heard in his interview, he was really looking forward to winning this stage and uh, taking the GC. So it's it's right where he wants it. He's you know, he's prepared for this and he knows the climb. So he's he's going to push this. And I think he's gauging and um, tempering out his watts just enough so he can get to the top in first. Yep, there we go. And he, he has 12 seconds now uh, on Anthony Costas, who is chasing hard, but I think has, uh, you know, he's relented. I think he knows that he's going to be, uh, he's going to be second place here today. He's not going to be able to bridge back up to Lionel Sanders, but uh, there we go. 12 seconds now separating those two athletes pushing, both pushing over six watts per kilo mid-150 heart rate, both those uh, athletes with Kenneth Vanderdrys chasing one minute behind the athlete, athletes that we see on screen. Lionel Sanders on the left and Anthony Costas on the right. Yeah, and uh, I think Lionel's probably looking at his um, his fastest time up the Alp de Zwift, and he's, at this point he's saying to himself, well, I think I got away from Costas. Uh, Vanderdrys is still over a minute back. Now can I get my PR up the Alp? So he, he's probably looking at those splits and looking at those times and really going to chase that in the final four to five uh, hairpin turns up to the finish. Yeah, and he's doing so with a, a fair amount of watts, Sean. I don't know about you, but I'm not, I'm not uh, seeing 450 watts uh, at turn seven when I'm going up the Alp to Zwift. Well, the, the nice thing about climbing up the Alp, um, if anyone's ever been up or climbed the Alp, is you get an average per hairpin turn. So there's 21 turns, you get 21 segments where it resets your average watts. So it gives you a nice um, goal every time. If you were, you know, for someone like Lionel, he's 
just looking at his power right now, he's probably looking to average 460, 450 watts for the last five segments. So he see he gets a reset every time and he can continue to chase those segments and average those watts all the way up to the top, even if nobody's around him. It gives him a personal uh, personal goal to chase every time. Yeah, there we go. As he hits turn number five, uh, he gets a reset on those watts. That's a great point, Sean. I know I always love looking at that. Keeps me motivated for sure. And uh, not that Lionel needs any more motivation. I'm sure he's got some good music going on there. And he is cranking. He's definitely looking... He's looking at a time, Sean. I think you're right. I think he's looking for that PR, and maybe he's looking to make sure he wins uh, by a big enough gap uh, to kind of put a stamp on it. Because I do think, you know, he's a smart racer. He knew going into the series when I talked to him that it was about those intermediate points for those first three races. That w that was what was going to allow you to maybe win the GC, where I do think he still wants to win a stage. And if there's a stage that he could pick to win, it would be today's and Kenneth Vanderdrys doing a great job. He's going to have his best result of the series here for what an an athlete that we kept referring to is kind of that most combative rider. Uh, Vanderdrys is holding holding pretty strong, only a minute twenty back, Sean. Yeah, he's been consistent through the Z Pro Tri series, especially as the aggressor. You know, he loves attacking. He showed um, on the uh the innsbruck course when we we finished at the top of the kom that he he made an attack very early and costas just got him at the very end so you know he can climb as well and he's showing that again here today um up into third only a minute 23 behind lionel who's having a phenomenal race and consistently pushing over 440 watts so very strong riding from kenneth vanderjoyce today and uh great to see him have uh, have his day today in go finish on the podium it looks like yeah and he's got a minute if he wants to bring back anthony costas i think that's going to be a big call for as good of a climber as anthony costas is and it doesn't look like his watts are dropping too much at this point uh, as these athletes hit turn four uh sorry as lionel sanders hits uh comes up to turn four uh, they are still pushing the pace here 10 percent on the left side for lionel uh and kenneth vandedrice dips down into seven percent gradient so a little bit of uh, respite for him as he's chasing Anthony Costas, but still trying to hold off Braden Curry, who I think went pretty deep. So I don't see him pulling back Vandedrice. He's now 16 seconds behind. Uh, uh, Braden Curry is going to have to start worrying about Ben Canute, who's having a great ride today. And he is now about 30 seconds behind Braden Curry, looking uh, to move up to fourth place in today's race. Yeah, and then if you look a little further down, Knut's kind of separated himself, like you said, but then we've got a pack of five riders all back around two minutes and 50 seconds down to three minutes back, and that's going to complete your top 10 there um, with Odin, Hansen, Troutman, Laundry doing really well up the Alp today. He's going to solidify his top 10 finish if he can continue this and maybe even move up to the top five with today's points. So. Really impressive from Laundry, um, who said he's just been getting better and better every week and uh, really showing it today on the Alp where we might not have expected him to be uh, as strong. So really coming into this race, uh, firing on all cylinders. Yeah, as far as expectations, it, this is exactly who I was going to talk about. Production, reading my mind. Ronnie Schildneck, that guy, hats off. He, uh, As far as I'm concerned, he wins. He's, he's repping the Masters division as well as the uh, over... 80, uh, 80 kilos division as well. Uh, I don't know that Ronnie would have thought he'd move up in the GC on the final stage of Watopia. And I think he's going to do that, Sean. I think he might move into the top five. And it's, again, it's not always watts per kilo. It's, uh, you know, maybe how many watts in general and how much you're willing to eat the pain, so to speak. And, and Ronnie is, is doing that today. Yeah, and we look to like the 70.3 or Ironman racers to really do well at the Alp. It's all about 35 plus minutes of really high power. And those those type of athletes are consistently doing reps in those 15, 20, 30 minute uh, zones. So definitely used to doing those long, sustained, high power reps. And you can see like Shieldnick really pushing real high power here, doing great, still in the top 10, holding that eighth position. and. Um, Got a nice little group behind him, but uh, looking really strong right now. Well, Sean, we're going to need someone to do the math, but I think actually, I think Ronnie has been really looking at the points. I think Ronnie, if he pulls up on Jackson Landry, who's 11 seconds in front, those two athletes are only separated by two points. I, I, I think Ronnie could move into the podium today if he 
finishes in front of Jackson Landry and gets a gap in between those those two riders. That's yeah. That's uh, I don't have the points in front of me, and it's too hard and too uh, complicated for me to figure out. But he, he probably knows what he needs to do. They've looked at the GC results and uh, probably done all the calculations on where he needs to finish, and has been eyeing someone like Landry, who's having a great race and really. Um, at this point, only 30 seconds up, so uh, or 20 seconds up, so closing the gap to to Landry. Yes, yeah, so I mean, Odin is in front of him as well, so he's going to have to get rid of Odin in that group. But uh, considering that Aaron Royal has had uh, not a great race uh, today in front of him, and with the drops of Kunima and Phillips, uh, the podium is in contention for Ronnie Shieldneck. So that's why he's pushing that pace uh, so hard there. And uh, yes, that group has caught. Jackson Landry, so you have Jackson Landry, Matt Trotman, Ronnie Shieldneck, except Odin in there as well. Lionel Sanders at the front, gets out of the saddle. Oh, Sean, that came up pretty quick, man. They're riding so fast, they're almost a K from the finish. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be crazy to see what Lionel's time is. Um, compare it to some of the other pro cyclists we've had go up the Alp. Um, last couple of months ago, we had Team Ineos ride up with Darren Thomas, um, Chris Froome, and Bernal, so... We can do a little bit of race to race comparison, see how Lionel stacks up, but he is out of the saddle and is smashing it to try to get to the finish as fast as possible and see if he can crack himself with a new, uh, reward himself with a new PR today. Oh, this is brutal. He's absolutely going for it. No doubt he's looking at the clock, Sean. I had my uh, handy little stopwatch go when they hit the climb and he's coming up on my watch to about 33 minutes so far. So with 850 meters to go, he's certainly going to go faster than his PR. Uh, whether or not he goes faster than those Team Ineos athletes, that's another question. But certainly that'll be um, some pride for Lionel if he's able to do that. But uh, to me, this is this is awesome because you, you always you want to race like this in a series to highlight the best overall athlete. But you want to also allow that overall athlete to show just how dominant they are. And the fact that he went after those points meant he was a tactician. If he wanted to, he could have tried to win all those races, but it wouldn't have been the best thing uh, to be able or if he was trying to win the series overall as he adjusts himself going into the final 500 meters. But it's awesome to be able to see Lionel ride every one of these amazing athletes off of his wheel coming into the top of the Alp, Sean. Yeah, and you see there Lionel was getting frustrated. He's looking at his heart rate numbers, and it said 97 beats per minute. So he's made a couple adjustments. It's back up to 159 beats per minute, which is relatively high for Lionel Sanders. We typically see him in the 140s, 150s, but uh, he's going all out today, really gunning for the finish line at this point, 525 watts, crushing it out of the saddle and really shooting for not just the win, but his best time ever up the Alp. Yeah, he certainly is. I think right now he's looking for a sub-35. I think maybe that's uh, kind of the carrot that he's looking at. 11%, 470 watts, 500 watts now for Lionel Sanders. Uh, it's definitely uh, worth uh, having the screen purely on Lionel for the finish of this race as he absolutely crushes himself, known to be an athlete that has an incredibly low heart rate when he's going hard. To see him at 165 means he's absolutely killing himself. 100 meters to go. Lionel Sanders is barely going to get under 35 minutes, I believe. Look at him kill himself. If you don't think this athlete wants to get everything out of himself every time he races, uh, you are, you're are you just plain wrong. And here we go. Under the finish banner, we're going to have Lionel Sanders taking the queen stage. <laughs> Look at the pain on Lionel's face. Uh, he wins up the Alp and absolutely solidifies the fact that he is going to crush the field in this uh, Invitational Series. Uh, this is the only race that he's won, but he's going to have a huge gap on points. As we see Anthony Costas riding in alone, uh, he's going to be about a minute, maybe a little bit over a minute behind Lionel Sanders, and he is certainly going to be stoked to see that finish line banner. Yeah, incredible effort for Lionel. He talked about the st strategy all in the pre-race uh chat you had with him about going for the intermediate points, the sprint points, the KOMs, and then today really wanting to win on the Alp and coming out and doing just that in a dominating fashion. I'm um, going to have a massive lead and really be separate himself. I mean, what is he now? 30, over 30 points ahead on the GC standing. So really dominant, dominant performance by Lionel all month and uh, really putting the uh, cherry on top today up the Alp. 
Yeah, absolutely. And we see Anthony Costas get under the banner one minute behind Lionel Sanders. So those two athletes, I think, Sean, when we decided we were going to do this series, we thought those two athletes were going to be the, the, the ones that finished on top. And very fitting that they end up finishing on top of the Alp, but also uh, first and second on that final stage. And it looks like they're going to be first and second in the GC. So uh, definitely riders that uh, earned uh, earn their paycheck and uh, certainly are going to enjoy uh, the spin down today from the out. But we have Kenneth Vanderdry still with some work to do. Uh, he's one that has pushed the pace and been an instigator many, many races in this series. So Kenneth Vanderdry is just a few moments now before he gets under the banner. Yeah, coming up to the last 200 meters and looking down if fifth, sixth, seventh, we've got Jackson Laundry and Ronnie Shieldnick still battling it out. Ronnie is sitting, uh, looks like it's 12 seconds behind Jackson Laundry with only, uh, they've made it out around the last hairpin, so it's just the final straight to go, and it looks like Laundry will probably be able to hold off uh, Ronnie Shieldneck up this final stretch. Yeah, it's, uh, we're going to take a look at those guys racing here. We have Vandertrice going underneath the banner. Congrats to Kenneth getting a podium uh, today, and he is going to, move into the top 10 and uh, get a little bit of paycheck for his time uh, in these uh, this four race series. Braden Curry now coming up to the finish. And uh, we have uh, some of our GC contenders still moving uh, through the race course here today. Uh, Braden Curry about to come on 200 meters to go. Yeah, and really there we go. Effort. We will get our GC standings at the finish of our women's race, but they are underway. So we're going to start uh, in on our women's coverage for today. And before we get to the women's race that is already underway, we're going to jump right to kind of a highlight, Sean, of what these women uh, experienced and how the race went last week in Innsbruck. Brutality of the Innsbruck ring took its first victims early on in the race as the front group of eight women dominated up the leg snapper. And that gap to that chasing group has uh, 14 seconds now. GC contenders Teresa Adam, Lucy Charles Barkley, and Jocelyn McCauley pushed on, and with the group thinning out, every sprint and attack was fiercely fought for as some of the top triathletes in the world laid down some ridiculous watts to clinch those extra points. Going hard right now. We got Teresa Adam at the front. Melanie Moore, Teresa Adam, Lucy Charles Barkley with three points. Ruth Assel at the front of this group. The group is coming in strong. Easily the most combative rider in the race, Ruth Assel lunged to take the win at the line, only to be beaten in a photo finish by the ever consistent winner in this series, Teresa Adam. The timing is impeccable. After three rounds, the GC standings are now dominated by Teresa Adam with a commanding 15-point lead over Jocelyn McCauley and 17 points over Lucy Charles Barkley. Expect to see fireworks early on on the Alp de Zwift as it will take a heroic effort to snatch the overall series win from Teresa, who will look to go four for four and make the series a clean sweep for the Kiwi. Well, Sean, that was some uh, impressive racing from the women this week. No doubt we're going to see more of it uh, here today. But anything that stood out to you, surprises from last week's race? Uh, not surprises, but Teresa Adams still winning every race she entered and dominating the key standings. This is something we weren't uh, expecting going into this race series. So amazing to see her continue that consistency. Jocelyn McCauley racing really well too. And I think today on the Alp, she's going to have to really attack if she wants to get away and try to claw back some points to Teresa Adams. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a huge, huge effort uh, for anybody to take this series away from Teresa Adams. Certainly Lucy Charles Barkley a little bit farther back on the GC standings than she would like, uh, having 17 point gap on Teresa Adams. So something huge is going to have to happen for her to jump there. But so it, if we took the GC out of it, Sean, who would we be favoring on a, a stage like today? Um, through the rest of the Z Pro Tri Series, we've seen uh, athletes like Melanie Moore have been awesome on the climbs. Um, you know, Emma Pollan's been really strong. 
Uh, Lucy is always strong in Zwift, whether it's uh, during climbs or just across hilly races. So Antonio Reznikov as well. I think those are the names we're going to look for early on the climb and see if they can kind of hold that and maintain that effort all the way to the top. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's it's going to be a tough one for sure. Uh, there's a lot of racing uh, to be had, no doubt, as these women uh, get ready to uh, put the effort up the Alps, Sean. And we've we've talked uh, in the past about power-ups being super important uh, as far as a, a, a part of the tactics of these races. Which power-ups are these women going to be looking at today? Yeah, we, we talked about this in the men's race, but we can refresh here. It's it's really all about the featherweight power-up. Um, really, no other power-up is going to help today. Um, you want to get the featherweight and use it either on an attack or use it to give yourself a little reprieve during some of these steepest parts of the climb. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the featherweight is uh, certainly one I'd be crossing my fingers uh, that I would get if I was out here with these athletes racing, and uh, no doubt they're gonna they're gonna want um, they're gonna want all the help they can get. Yeah, and you can kind of see already the the Alp is starting to separate some of these riders. We got Melanie Moore up to the front, really pushing the pace early. Ruth trying to hang on, um, but there is definitely gaps opening up, and this race already down to 25 is strung out to 45 seconds across all the riders. So. Definitely um, Melanie Moore taking an aggressive stance, really going after the first part of this climb hard and trying to get to the top uh, well ahead of the other riders. Yeah, there we go. We've, we've kind of been waiting uh, for Melanie to put, uh, to have a stage where she could show off and she certainly is doing so right now. 15 seconds on Ruth Assel. Uh, not, the, not the two athletes necessarily I thought would, that would be fighting for it. Uh, already here today, Sean. I, I would have expected Teresa Adam and, and Macaulay to be pushing a little bit more towards the front. Yeah, and I think this is just more of a, a an attack from Melanie than anything else. We've got Ruth, Jocelyn, and Teresa Adams and Reznikov all kind of sitting back uh, 25, 30 seconds back. So we still have a pretty big pack together from uh, third all the way down to about 13th. So um, I think this is more of an attack for Melanie, and they're kind of they're letting her letting her get away. I don't want to say letting her get away, but seeing if she can hold it. Yeah, there we go. Great uh, shot side to side as Melanie Moore goes uh, off the front, uh, trying to get a little bit of a gap, trying to get some glory uh, for herself on today's stage, but also trying to move up. Sean, I mean, she is in fourth place on the GC. She's only two points behind. Lucy Charles Barkley as they enter this last stage and with those bonus points available she certainly could move her way into second place um, using big air quotes here easily uh, but you know maybe even a shot uh, to move up past Teresa Adam but that's going to be a, a bit bigger of a call. Yeah she'll need Teresa to really kind of falter up this climb. Um, we've seen Teresa dominate on a lot of the rolling courses and definitely in the sprint finishes so a little bit of an unknown to us what, how she goes up the climb. I think she's going to do just fine and be really strong. Like we've seen Lionel um, just finish the men's race uh, with a really strong performance. I think we'll see the same from Teresa, but definitely Melanie looking to maybe move up out of fourth into second or third place. Um, and then if something happens with Teresa, the, be in position to jump into the top spot, but uh, probably just looking for that second or third spot at this point. Yeah, no, I think uh, I think you're right. So on screen, we got Lucy Charles Barkley coming up on the shoulder of Jocelyn McCauley. They've been fighting uh, kind of back and forth this whole series. Again, two, two points separate those two athletes. And I think Lucy Charles Barkley is starting to settle in. She uh, maybe uh, let uh, those athletes, uh, Ruth Assel and Melanie Moore, kind of push that pace early, and, and she wanted to settle in. But now she's doing her best to bring it back, and she certainly is bringing back Ruth Assel now uh, just five seconds behind that athlete uh, and Lucy Charles Barkley is now 22 seconds behind Melanie Moore. She is riding with Jocelyn McCauley. Reznikov is a little bit of a gap behind her and then uh, Pallant and Teresa Adam in that group as well. But right now, Lucy Charles Barkley, the athlete I think that we all were looking for to try to take this stage today is riding in third place, uh, chasing down Ruth Assel and Melanie Moore. And we've got, uh, let's see, we've got Nikki Bartlett uh, is in that group behind Teresa Adam as well. Angela Nath just three seconds 
behind Nikki trying to hold in. Jess Learmoth at 36 seconds. Vanilla Langridge at 47. Paul Finlay and Flora Duffy right behind there. So a large, large group uh, behind the athlete that we have on screen here, Lucy Charles Barkley. But Lucy Charles Barkley is moving up. Uh, looks like she's going to get up on the wheel of the current second place rider on the road, Ruth Assel. Maybe they'll join forces. Uh, maybe she'll go right by. But it does look like she's putting in an effort, Sean, and she's got a little bit of a gap now on Jocelyn McCauley. So Jocelyn McCauley actually looks like is suffering a little bit. Her watch dropped uh, substantially. Uh, so she's now five seconds back, and it looks like she's going to have to start looking to hold off Emma Plant or maybe uh, settle in so she can stay with Emma when she comes up on her wheel. But right now we see Lucy Charles Barkley coming up on Ruth Assel. Yeah, and she's uh, definitely coming up, wanting to move into this top three. And we caught up with Lucy earlier this week um, to talk about racing up the Alps. So let's see what she had to say about this final stage. Everyone is racing super strong. So there is no point in breaking away. And then there's a group of strong girls still together behind that are clawing you back. So hopefully um, if I try and go for a breakaway, I either get a few other girls to work with or you just get a massive breakaway and see you later. But I think it's that's going to be pretty difficult to do. So I think it's still going to be pretty tactical, finding the girls that are going to work together and try and leave um, a bigger group behind, try and split the group up early um, and leave it down to maybe only a few of us on that final bit of the climb. Well, there you go. I don't think, I think maybe her game plan changed a little bit. It doesn't look like she's looking for a group to help her out at this point, John. Yeah, and it looks like she's already come up to Ruth and just gone by her. Ruth is trying to stay with her, as it looks like she is. But Melanie, already with a 12-second gap, um, doesn't look like the gap is increasing. And so I think Lucy's definitely chasing her down and going to work with Ruth to try to close that down as much as possible. But Justin McCulley looks to be going the other way, falling slightly back uh, with Emma Pallon and Teresa Adams rounding out the top six. Um, Teresa Adams is the one we're going to want to watch, um, see if she continues to fall. There's a couple athletes right behind her that could potentially move up. Jess Learmont, An Angela Nath, and Nikki Barletter are all within 10 seconds and have an opportunity to move up uh, ahead of Teresa Adams if she cracks at any point during this climb. Yeah, I think that's great to point out, Sean. It does look like, you know, I'm just looking at her numbers here. It looks like she's settling in, actually. It looks like she's moving back up. You know, she is losing a little bit of time still to Melanie Marr, but uh, she has been able to kind of move back up. She is now just past Emma Pallant. Uh, so she is now in fifth place, and she's coming up on Jocelyn McCauley. So I think Teresa Adam knows that, you know, she she can't really – she she can only lose this race if she, if she has a bad performance, right, as far as the overall series. Uh, it would take a massive explosion for her – to, to lose the series. So I think building into it and having that time trial effort is a, a smart move from her. And it looks like she is building into the effort as she goes now up close to six watts per kilo. So I think she's just gonna try to sweep up those athletes in front of her. But right now, an athlete that's been doing a great job in this series really showed herself to be uh, an instigator, no doubt a great sprinter. She did not rate herself overly well on this climb against the caliber of athletes that she's been able to, to be around this series, and she's certainly proving herself wrong to a certain extent. But we sat down with her and chatted a little bit about the, this race experience in general. Having the Zwift racing has been amazing. Like Just have something so regularly to look forward to. It kind of gives like little goals each week to, to work towards, which at a time when there's no actual races to work towards has been, I think, quite important mentally as well as sort of physically to have something to train for. Um, and like the other thing with it is also, you, you know, you get to race all the people that we wouldn't normally get to race anyway in real life. So like, it's pretty awesome, like being lined up on that start line and looking at some of the names. And yeah, I mean, I'm still kind of in disbelief at actually being able to be anywhere compared to most of them. So <laughs> if I can hang on next week, uh, I'll be pretty happy. Well, Sean, I'd say she's she's pretty happy because she's hanging in there pretty well. Riding in third position on the Alp, uh, she just got ridden off the wheel of Lucy Charles Barkley. Uh, just, I mean, she's right there. Lucy's literally just out of screen, uh, just about a second behind. So, Ruth, there we go. She's able to get right back on, 
Lucy Charles Barclay. So great, great performance by Ruth Assel that didn't necessarily rate herself to be this far up. And she's doing a great job. And Sean, worth noting, she's in fifth place in the GC. Uh, so possible for her to, to move up. Uh, you'd have to see uh, some explosions and uh, from Teresa Adam or from Jocelyn McCauley for her to move up. So it's going to be hard, but she, it looks like she will be able to hold on to this top five in the GC if she stays where she's at. But as we speak, Sean, Teresa Adam, I think, I think maybe I was right. She was building into that effort. She's now in fourth place on the road. She's 26 seconds behind Melanie Moore, but she has passed Jocelyn McCauley, Emma Plant, and Antonina Reznikov. Yeah, and I'd expect Teresa to be a little bit conservative at the beginning of this climb, especially if she's, I know she talks, uh, she's been up it a few times, but when you have that big of a lead on the GC standings, you don't want to be too aggressive. Um, we, we saw Lionel kind of sit in at the beginning. Um, I think Teresa is doing somewhat similar and really going to try to build up and ramp up this effort, get into a position where she can't lose the GC and then see how she feels and ramp up from there. Yeah, I think you're totally right. And I think that's exactly what she's doing. And one thing she's proven in this series so far, Sean, is that she's not only, you know, the, one of the most talented cyclists that we have here, clearly b being able physically to win these races, you have to be that dominant. But she's also very smart and she's she's prepared herself quite well. She knows the tactics necessary and she's looked at the points and uh, kind of dosed her energy out where she's needed to and where it's been smart to. So I think uh, I think you're right on point that she knew that the only way she could really mess this up is if she blew herself up early trying to stay with these attacks. And now she's really ramping up, Sean. So now she's only 20 seconds behind Melanie Moore, starting to bring that gap back and uh, looking to get up to Ruth Assel and Lucy Charles Barkley, who actually, Sean, uh, it looks like we have Ruth Assel and Lucy Charles Barkley moving back up to the wheel of Melanie Moore. Yeah, it looks like they're all going to come together at the front um, and join, uh, form this pack of three that's going to go up the Alp together. Um, definitely interesting from Trace Adams to continue pressing the pace down to 21 seconds. Um, yeah, really nice uh, tactics from her. We didn't get to see a lot of her in the early versions of the Z Pro Tri Series because of the timing. So it was nice when we moved this race back a couple hours that Teresa could uh, participate. And um, because of that, we had really no clue on, you know, what she was a sprinter, or how she did over some of the climbs. But she's been proven uh, to tactically be very savvy and swift, use all the power up to the right time and really dial in those sprint finishes to, to take the uh, first three races of the series so far. Yeah, she certainly has been. And she uh, was focused on today's race and was excited about it. We sat down and talked to her a little bit about it earlier this week. looking forward to racing up Alp de Zwift. I've done it quite a few times in training. Um, obviously, try and get some um, climbing, eventually get a Tron bike, but to actually going as hard as I can and see what time I can do up the Alp. Um, and obviously, least looking forward to it for that same exact reason. I feel like it's just gonna be hard from the start for however long it takes us to get to the top. So it's just gonna be um, full gas, I think. Yeah, full gas it certainly is as she is now chasing a group of three athletes at the front of this race, uh, including Melanie Moore, Ruth Assel, and Lucy Charles Barclay. So 18 seconds back now uh, as we speak, Teresa Adams certainly putting on the pressure, uh, trying to bridge back up. And Sean, tell us a little bit about that difference. Uh, if you're an athlete going into this long, sustained effort uh, like all these women are doing today, how... How smart is that approach from Teresa Adam to maybe build into that climb? Like, explain a little bit more to the viewers why that is a, such a, is a safer way to go, but can still actually have the athlete maybe finish up on the top. Yeah, I mean, I think for the, the general, like the general population, all of us uh, normal riders who can't <laughs> handle these types of efforts, um, starting very, you know, very conservative. This, this is a long climb, 35, 40 minutes for the men 40 to 45 minutes for the women. So you don't want to give everything you have in the first five minutes. If you spike it too hard, you really suffer on the back half of this climb. It's unrelenting. You see a lot of the 10%, 12% grades um, through the middle of these portions. If your legs are gone halfway through and you just can't hold that watts, uh, you, you continually will drift further and further back while riders who 
who uh, gauge their effort and plan this ride a little more will start to pull away in that final uh, three or four hairpin turns to the finish. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, as we're talking, Sean, it looks like Lucy Charles Barkley has put in a hard effort and an attack, uh, it looks like. And she now has five seconds on Ruth Assel and Melanie Moore. And uh, Melanie Moore is trying. She's, she's at six watts per kilo trying to bridge back up. But I think that's it, Sean. I think Lucy Charles Barkley has enough of a gap that she's going to be able to settle in and uh, push herself at her own pace and finish this one alone. Yeah, really, I mean, really strong effort there. And Melanie and Ruth are still dangling in that six-second um, area. So they, they, they're not fully broken yet. But if that starts going back to seven, eight, nine seconds, I think we can say that this is a, an attack for the finish for, for Lucy. Um, we're not even at halfway yet. We've got a couple more hairpin turns before we get to the halfway point of this climb. So still a bunch of racing left. And um, we've seen Teresa Adams slowly close down um, some of these gaps. Uh, she's definitely getting closer to Ruth and Melanie Moore. Um, let's see how she goes once she rides, if she can ride up to them and then make a pass. Yeah, no, I think you're right. And uh, yes, there's plenty of racing left. I might have called that one a little bit, a little bit early. Uh, but she is certainly not content to stay with those two athletes behind as that gap is now opening really, really quickly, Sean. So Melanie Moore, Ruth Assel are now 10 seconds behind Lucy Charles Barkley. I think now they know that they've kind of popped and they're trying to settle in and maybe try to hold off Teresa Adam, who is who is still moving and, and has lost the least amount of time to Lucy Charles Barkley, uh, clearly out of that three, but of anybody else in the top 10. So Teresa Adam, 24 seconds back still, now 12 seconds behind Ruth Assel and Melanie Moore. But Lucy Charles Barkley absolutely stamping her authority on the front of this race and and wants to get her first win of the series and move herself up uh, into second place uh, in the general uh, classifications after uh, the series is done and, and maybe find some way to upset Teresa Adam, but I think that's gonna be a, a big, big ask. Yeah, I think she'll need a lot of help from the riders behind her, um, especially Jocelyn McCauley, Emma Pallant, and Reznikov and Learmont to really make a, a strong back half of this ride and try to jump in front of Teresa Adams. But the way Teresa Adams is riding, I, I find that highly unlikely. She looks to be uh, in control and really just steadily going up this climb, maintaining those those gaps and uh, keeping it all, keeping her, keeping her clearly um, in the GC lead uh, with the riders that are in front of her and behind her. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, she is uh, doing a great job with that. Uh, Jocelyn McCauley is the only one in the top three that's faltering a little bit, but she's still right there with uh, in the top five right behind Teresa Adam about 20 seconds back. So she's going to get a fair amount of points too. Lucy Charles Barkley through turn 11 is well, well in the lead. And she's certainly one uh, that has experience up the Alp. I think I had her down at her best time uh, going up the Alp was I believe 41, uh, 41, 44 uh, was her best time up the Alp at 280 watts during the tour of Watopia just uh, this year. So uh, maybe she's going to try to best that time here today, Sean. Yeah, I mean, it looks like this with the quality of field um, in the women's, on the women's tri, Z Pro Tri Race Series, I think she's going to need to replicate a performance like that to stay on the top. Um, and it looks like she's doing just that, really going above and beyond 16 seconds ahead of Melanie Moore now and Ruth Astle, um, really stamping her mark on this uh, race and this series. Yep, absolutely. Uh, so she is in the front, and we're just going to update on kind of what's happening behind our leader here, Lucy Charles Barkley. We've got Melanie Moore, Ruth Assel, uh, 16 and 17 seconds back. Teresa Adams, six seconds behind that duo. Jocelyn McCauley is 46 seconds back. Emma Plant just a few seconds behind her. Then we've got Antonina Reznikov, Jess Learmonth having a good ride in eighth place. Annabelle Luxford real early in the morning for her. Uh, down in Australia, she is now in ninth place. Angela Nath holding on to top 10. Then we've got Nikki Bartlett, Jackie Herring, Paul Finley, Laura Sadal, Fanella Landridge. So uh, best athletes on the planet here racing, and they're all they're all in their own world of hurt at this point, Sean. But Melanie Moore is still trying to claw back to Lucy Charles Barkley. Yeah, they're trying to maintain that gap, not lose too much time, but we can see consistently um with the side-by-side -side view that um, Lucy is holding a much higher watts per kilogram at this point. She's going to continue to increase that lead um, unless there's a big move from 
Moore or Char or uh, Ruth Astle, but um, look at the difference in the cadence here. Lucy up at 83, 84. Melanie Moore still grinding away at 66 RPM, so uh, still sit settling in, ro really rolling that low RPMs and uh, trying to maintain this gap. Yeah, absolutely, and she's got uh, she still has Ruth Astle on her uh, on her wheel coming up around her actually at this point to take a pull to try to uh, continue to hold off Teresa Adams. Those those top three points are very valuable, and I think. Uh, Ruth realizes that it looks like actually she almost did a little bit of an attack there has a, a small gap on Melanie Moore uh, Melanie super super talented athlete uh, that has uh, some great experience Riding obviously on Zwift and racing on Zwift, but has done a fair amount of repeats uh, going up the Alp as we see Teresa Adam has bridged up to those two athletes so I think that was Ruth Assel trying to make sure she got away before Teresa caught back on a little bit of tactics there but Teresa Adam uh, is now going to make this a group of three as she fights to get herself uh, back to the front of this race as they're now all 23 seconds behind uh, our leader on the left Lucy Charles Barkley. Yes, uh, Ruth Assel leading this po at this point in the second pack and a really impressive riding from her. One of the ZA athletes from last year, she was an amateur. This is her first year as a pro. And to see her mixing it up with uh, the top athletes in the world, Lucy Charles, uh, Teresa Adams, and Melanie Moore, some of the strongest cyclists on the triathlon side in this race series. Um, and she's right there up in the top three right now uh, doing battle with all of them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, uh, you know, she's surprised us so far this series. I think after this series is done, we'll no longer be surprised by uh, how much of a gutsy eraser Ruth Assel is. Uh, she certainly uh, proved it to us that uh, she knows how to race on Zwift and certainly has the talent uh, to do it uh, quite effectively. Lucy Charles Barkley now on screen. She's all by herself. She's got five and a half kilometers to go she has 27 seconds on a group of three incredibly talented athletes with Teresa Adam now in second place pushing that pace Ruth Assel sitting on the wheel and Melanie Moore it looks like those athletes are starting to spread out I do think that Adam is starting to push that pace um, you know it, she's consistent she's been consistently moving through the field Sean and bringing that gap back so I think she's moved to the front and continue to kind of just uh, press on that diesel and on that accelerator and it looks like she's now gapped those two athletes so Ruth Assel and Melanie Moore are now gapped behind Teresa Adams so it is a battle Lucy Charles Barkley versus Teresa Adam with Teresa Adam uh, giving Lucy Charles Barkley a 27 second gap at this point but right now on screen it's Jocelyn McCauley riding in fifth place one minute behind our leader uh, and 30 seconds behind uh, what we will still call our chase group of uh, Melanie Moore, Ruth Assel, and Teresa Adam. Yeah, we can see Jocelyn on the screen here having a really great uh, series so far. Um, still r having a nice rise, ride today, sitting in fifth. Um, Emma Pollan and Antonia Reznikov a little bit behind her, but she's got some daylight. And if she maintains this position and continues to push, um, I think she'll fairly easily stay in the top five of this. And um, looks like just based on points might drop down to third or fourth in the um, overall GC standings. We'll have to get those points tallied up before the finish if if uh, not much changes in the next 5K. Yeah, no, I think that's a good call, Sean. I mean, I think if, um, and I think is going to be uh, a word I'm going to use a lot because I'm not so good at the maths, but uh, especially as things move this quickly. But uh, Melanie Moore, I, I believe if she finishes in the podium and Macaulay does not, that she will be able to jump Macaulay to move up into third place in the GC just because we have those top three uh, placings uh, getting bonus uh, on this round. So I think that's going to be what Melanie Moore is going to be looking at. But right now they are riding in fourth and fifth position. But Reznikov, someone we have uh, I think touted as one of the better climbers in the group is now uh, leading uh, quite a, a uh, actually she's in the middle uh, in between a couple groups but she is riding quite quite well looks really comfortable and is riding at 4.7 watts per kilo heart rate nearing 180 beats a minute so she is certainly working uh, quite hard Sean. Yeah and it, this is what we talked about earlier once we really get onto the Alp and things start to separate it's just every woman for themselves to the top um, hold the highest watts per kilogram you can from the base to the top and uh, kind of let the 
chips fall where they may. There's not much you can do to like hang on a wheel or draft somebody on this course. It's really all about just the power in your legs and what you can sustain from the bottom to the top. No, it certainly is. I think that's uh, uh, well said, Sean. And Lucy Charles Barkley is an athlete that's very comfortable with that kind of effort. So I think she's going to be stoked. That's how this race has turned out. You know, there was a, a bit of uh, tactics early on. Uh, with some other athletes going off the front and her having to bridge back up, but now she's uh, uh, it's just her versus the versus the Alps, Sean, so I think that's where she wants to be, but behind her is Teresa Adam, that is now 33 seconds behind, I'm trying to move back up right now, it's uh, we have Flora Duffy on the screen, uh, she is settling in, she is in a, uh, a group uh, about, looks like she's a minute, 13 seconds back, uh, actually, I'm not sure that's quite right, we got some time moving around here but uh regardless she is chasing uh on her own at this point just under four watts per kilo settling into the alp as we move uh through the middle of this stage with 4k to go for our uh leader in the front uh obviously leading in the front which would be um which would be lucy charles barkley we were able to sit down and talk with flora duffy earlier today kind of about her experiences in the series and what she's expecting today Goal one is to get to the climb with the lead bunch, which is easier said than done for sure. And then, yeah, once I get to the climb, I think I will just follow um, whoever is charging the climb at the start for as long as I can. Because what I've kind of found with Swift is almost once the gaps open, it's so difficult to bring them back. And hopefully I make it to the, to the finish somewhat near the leaders. That would be great. <laughs> There we go. And that was Flora Duffy uh, doing a great job here today. And uh, she was stoked to be a part of the series. Didn't have the best luck early on, uh, but she has good legs today. And then she's doing her best to keep up with the rest of the group. Yeah, working really hard. It's always a new experience, especially if you haven't gone up or raced up the Alp. Um, very difficult to gauge your effort all the way up, especially with those early portions of the climb that are very steep, very hard to kind of maintain those that high power while you push and then try to settle into a nice rhythm. It looks like she settled in nicely now and going to just continue to try to claw back time as much as she can up to the uh, up to the towards the finish of this race. Yep, she certainly is, and she has. Uh, just uh, over three and a half kilometers to go. Uh, again, she's one that has, has gone up here pretty quickly, but I think this might end up being her PR uh, for the day. Lucy Charles Barkley all by herself, but Lucy, or sorry, Teresa Adam is just 29 seconds behind and chasing, chasing hard and consistent. And I think if Teresa had to uh, to not win one race, you know, she's been three for three <laughs> at this point. Uh, she's going to get a win taken away from her. I think Lucy Charles Barkley doing it on the alp is uh she's gonna sleep okay yeah and at, at this point of the race with uh three and a half k to go lucy's probably just checking the um leaderboard next to her watching the watts per kilogram that Teresa adams is putting out and if she sees a spike she'll probably just try to match it and really maintain that that 29 to 34 second gap that she's been pretty consistently holding over Teresa adams for the last couple of kilometers of this race yep Absolutely. Teresa Adam at uh, near 300 watts and now over 315 watts. So she's bringing back a little bit of time actually on Lucy Charles Barclay, but uh, I don't think it's going to be enough with just three kilometers to go. And the experience that Lucy Charles Barclay has on this climb, it's going to be pretty hard for Teresa Adam to, to bridge that gap and drop Lucy. So uh, we will probably see Lucy Charles Barclay looks like move into second place again i'm kind of I, i've got papers flying all over my shoulders sean trying to figure out the gc standings but it looks like lucy charles barkley as it stands will jump uh, jocelyn mccauley for second if she stays where she's at and if melanie moore uh, jumps in front of ruth assel right now they're riding together uh, if they have a sprint to finish and she finishes on the podium i think she's going to jump or drop uh, Jocelyn McCauley all the way down to fourth place. So Jocelyn is riding very, very well at this point, but uh, she needs to, to to have some luck and have uh, maybe cheer for Ruth Astle to get in front of Melanie Moore, but continue that pace. But right now, these are the women on screen. Lucy Charles Barkley, Teresa Adam in a battle 
Uh, we expected it when we started this series that maybe these two would be clashing. And at this point, Teresa Adam has shown that she's the most consistent over the series. But Lucy Charles Barkley is showing that she really knows how to ride the Alp. Yeah, and it goes back to the, the men's race. We saw Lionel really uh, dominate the Alp earlier today. So um, it go, it's going back to the most experienced whiff riders have been the most successful today with uh, Lionel winning the first one. And it look, looks like Lucy will hang on and really maybe extend her lead up to the top uh, of the Alp today. But Therese Adams is going to do everything she can to try to claw back any seconds she can, not let it be uh, a 30, 35 second lead, um, try to get that under 30 seconds and close down this gap in case Lucy falters in the last couple K. Yep, yep, absolutely. And uh, those two athletes are still separating themselves uh, from the two athletes uh, chasing behind with Melanie Moore and Ruth Assel now almost a minute uh, behind, but Lucy Charles Barkley pushing that pace on her own and making sure she uh, solidifies that she's the best one going up the Alp here today. Two and a half kilometers to go, Sean. She's on a 9% uh, gradient. Uh, what do you think she's, uh, how, how is she keeping herself motivated uh, with two and a half K to go? And, uh, you know, it seems like a comfortable, comfortable gap. Yeah, it's it, it kind of back to what we talked about before. On the Alp, when you climb, you get uh, these 21 hairpin turns and you get a reset of your average watts every time you hit a turn. So when I'm going up, I like to look at those and just try to maintain a consistent uh, average watts. So <clears throat> when I see a turn, uh, go around a turn and it clicks back over to uh, zeros, I like to make sure I'm close to what I was at least averaging before. And I'm sure she's doing something similar. She may have watt averages in her mind of what she wants to hit for the last few hairpin turns all the way to the finish and just trying to be as close to possible to hitting those and staying consistent through this back half of the race yeah and i think she might be doing that because it does look like she is opening up a little bit more of a gap there Teresa adam was pulling back uh sometime on lucy charles barkley and holding at about 30 seconds now she's at 38 um, but this is the gap between lucy charles barkley and Melanie Moore, that's at 55 seconds, uh, 53 seconds on screen. But it's not just Melanie Moore, it's also Ruth Assel. So those two athletes are going to have a battle. And, Sean, if I know anything by watching Ruth Assel uh, race this series, that she's a tactician. She's going to sit on Melanie's wheel, and she's going to try to outsprint her at the end because there's points up for grab. But that's going to be a huge spoiler for Melanie Moore because that might actually kick her out of uh, finishing at the podium. Yeah, it's uh, it's gonna. I mean, it's gonna be up to Melanie Moore to really try to shake uh, Ruth on this last last couple of kilometers, um, get that little bit of a gap because we've seen Ruth sprint really well in in the last few races and really be aggressive when it comes down to the, the finish. So uh, Melanie's gonna want to see if she can get away uh, and not leave it to that final sprint finish because those two or three points that she could potentially lose might be the difference between her finishing fourth or moving up to third in the uh, overall GC standings at the end of the day. No, and I think it absolutely is is going to be that. That's going to be the case. I think if she finishes fourth and McCauley finishes fifth, McCauley will get her by one point, uh, again, by my bad math, but I think, uh, I think, I'm, I think I'm close. Uh, either way, uh, she's certainly trying right now to put a little bit of pressure on Ruth Assel as they go around. A bend, but Lucy Charles Barkley well in control. Now 41 seconds, Sean, up on Teresa Adam, a minute and two seconds on Melanie Moore and Ruth Assel, uh, who are now kind of swapping turns uh, as they chase, uh, maybe trying to bridge back up to Teresa Adam, uh, but those two certainly fighting it out. But 1.7 K to go for a leader on screen, Lucy Charles Barkley, who is uh, no doubt uh, going to win today's stage and looks like move into second uh, in the overall standings by race end. Yeah, really, really strong effort. She just climbed out of the clouds and is into clear road. We see the dust and snow of the blowing across the road as she's uh, heading towards the summit of this ride. Um, and really strong effort. And we'll see uh, see if she's got a, a time in mind that she was looking to break. Um, we saw Lionel do it in the first race, and we'll see if uh, Lucy's got a time in mind that she's going to finally dip under. But uh, on to Flora Duffy here, just steadily temp tempoing up this hill, trying to maintain her position. She's riding right around 21st place and uh, don't see anyone too close to her. 
No, she's, uh, she's settled in. Uh, I think at this point she wants to uh, get the Alp done and go to bed. It's a late, late evening for her uh, down in South Africa. Uh, great effort from Flora Duffy here in this series, and we've been stoked to have her. Uh, she's always uh, one that's fun to chat to and, and certainly put a good effort in for this series so far. But at the front of the race, Lucy Charles Barkley, not far to go now, 1.3 K to go. It looks like a 9%, 8% grade that she's on at this point. 5.3 watts per kilo, so certainly not uh, letting up at all, uh, letting off that accelerator. I think she she might be going for a PR up the up as well, Sean. Yeah, it looks like she's continuing to extend the lead over Teresa Adams, and then looking a little bit further down, the battle between Melanie Moore and Ruth Astle still continues. It looks like Melanie Moore has got a one-second gap on Ruth Astle, which is going to be important and really... Uh, separate some of these uh, GC standings on uh, uh, at the finish line. Yeah, absolutely, Sean. And as you as you say that, she's now opened up. It looks like two seconds. Melanie's at five and a half watts per kilo. Ruth Assel at 4.8. So uh, definitely that effort uh, seems to be on purpose as we look at uh, Lucy Charles Barclay coming up under that flam rouge. But uh, the only reason we're talking so much about this third and fourth place battle between Melanie Moore and Ruth Assel is it does have uh, implications for the final standings and I do think if Melanie Moore is able uh, to finish on the podium she will actually jump Jocelyn McCauley uh, for the final podium position in the GC so a lot uh, at stake there and it is three seconds now for Melanie Moore over Ruth Assel so Melanie she was the instigator Sean early in this stage uh, she kind of took it to herself to break up that group and as she separated herself Ruth Assel tried to jump across they found each other uh, at times, riding with Lucy Charles Barkley and Teresa Adam, who's now on screen. But now those two are having their own little battle, three seconds apart, riding in third and fourth place. But Teresa Adam uh, riding about 47 seconds behind Lucy Charles Barkley, about to go under 1K to go. And, Sean, I think that's going to be a, a sight for sore eyes, so to speak, for these athletes today. Yeah. Even though it's a K to go, it's still a long K. We're still going uphill at 10%. And Melanie Moore is looking here, really digging deep. You see her constantly going 5.2, 5.3 watts per kilogram, trying to maintain a higher watts per kilogram over Ruth Astell, who's only three seconds behind her in this final uh, kilometer of the race. So very close finish for those two with the GC points on the line. But Ruth, Ruth, Lucy Charles Barclay dominating the race. 50 seconds ahead of Teresa Adams and then Melanie Moore and Ruth Assel in that second battle. Yep, absolutely. Uh, some uh, some huge effort going in from Lucy Charles Barkley, and she played it perfectly, Sean. I mean, she let those other athletes go on the attack. I think she she knows her strength. She knows how she can ride up this climb from start to finish, and she kind of let those athletes uh, make uh, their attacks, whether maybe she thought they were false attacks or not, uh, but she let them go, and then she settled in and wasn't afraid to ride it at her own pace. And when the time was right, she dropped uh, those other two athletes and Melanie Moore and Ruth Assel and went it alone and looks like she's going to have almost a minute on the next closest competitor by the time we get to the top. Yeah, she, she played it a little conservative at the beginning, rode with, uh, rode with a pack through most of the first half of this race. And then it looked like she really had a point on the course where she wanted to make her attack and really push and make a break. She did it, um, got a gap pretty quickly, and then has just increased that gap for through the back half of this race. And looks like she's going to roll across here with 42 to 45 second lead over second place finisher. Yep, there she goes. And she's 300, 300 meters to go at about two, 295 watts, 310 watts. The last time she rode up this with her PR at 41 44 in the Tour of Watopia, she had an average of 280 watts. By the watts I've been seeing from her today, she might go a bit above that. So curious to see. Maybe we'll hear from her uh, after the race to see if she got her PR up the climb. But Lucy Charles Barkley, I think she's uh, she's been wanting it, and she's able to get her first one, her first win in the Invitational Series here today uh, on the Alp. And I think uh, she's she's going to be stoked to get it on this stage. Yeah, I mean, this is the stage that everybody wanted to win when you looked at the series from the very beginning, and looks like she's rolling onto the flat part, 0% grade to minus one right through to the finish. An amazing race today. Uh, Watts coming down to 130 watts. Nice and easy spin as she finishes and takes the win on the final stage today. A really impressive racing. 
Yeah, absolutely. And she went after it and not, not that far behind, 200 meters to go as Teresa Adam and, and Sean. To say she was dominant in the series would be an understatement. She won the first three in a row. She had a, a bunch of intermediate points, and she's going to win the overall standings with a huge, huge gap on second place, which will be Lucy Charles Barkley, who got the win here today. But Teresa Adam going to finish the stage in second place, but uh, certainly going to uh, solidify the fact that she's going to win our first Z Pro Tri Invitational Series. Yeah, really dominating uh, series for her. Um, can do it on the flats, can do it over rolling hills, and prove today that she could do it still on the climb. Uh, Teresa Adams, the, the most dominating uh, Zwift racer over the last month, and amazing performance for her. And now we got Melanie Moore really rolling up to the finish. She's going to have to make sure she stays ahead of Ruth, which it looks like she will. Um, has a nice little gap and rolls into third place. We'll see and tally these points to get the GC standings. I. I think we're a little confused on our math, but um, we'll let the, uh, the studio pull those numbers together and really tell us who uh, took those GC spots. But amazing, amazing racing here from Ruth Assel coming in fourth in this field is a uh, surprise, I think, all of us here. Yeah, absolutely. She's had a great, great series. And the fact that uh, she's able to finish fourth on the Alp, uh, one of the hardest stages that we could put together, uh, it certainly shows that she's in great fitness for some great Zwift racing. Uh, Jocelyn McCauley coming across the finish line in fifth place. And again, as you said, Sean, we're our, all of our heads are exploding here. We're all trying to figure out this math. But I do think, and we'll get it here in a second, but I do think that finish by Mar has put her in third place ahead of Jocelyn McCauley with the way the bonus points uh, worked for today's stage. Emma Pallant, she's one that has always kind of shined on those short, punchy climbs uh, here in this series, continues to have a great race and great series here today she's going to come across the finish line in sixth place and she was in sixth place i believe in the gc before heading in today and from what my math says she'll to hold that position uh, as she crosses the finish line in sixth place yeah really great racing by emma Pallant too we saw her in the z pro tri series from the very beginning and when she was racing up Box Hill, had a lot of power and was very aggressive. So we knew she'd be strong up uh, up the Alp today. So great to see her roll in, um, nice sixth place spot and uh, still top, top six in the uh, GC standings. Yeah, absolutely. Here we go, Annabelle Luxford up bright and early uh, down in Australia. Uh, we were stoked to see her sacrifice that early alarm every uh, Wednesday this month. Uh, and she's certainly done a great job in uh, the racing that she's done on the back of that and having one of her better races today. And she's probably going to move up a few places in the GC by this race end as well because she was in a pretty tight battle with uh, Nikki Bartlett and Angela Nate. So she might get a couple points and, and jump ahead too. Jackie Herring, one that is uh, a true professional in Zwift racing. We've seen her race a bunch here today. She is going to cross the finish line in eighth place. So a great, a great race by Jackie Herring. Yeah, impressive uh, riding from Annabelle Luxford. Like you said, uh, I don't know if I've ever gone up the Alp and finished it before 6 a.m. I, I think she might have done that this morning. Um, so great for the uh, Australians and Kiwis to be uh, attending these races, given it's so early in the morning for them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're stoked. Uh, Paul Finley uh, coming across the finish line. And that's what we've been so excited about with this series, Sean, is uh, obviously all these great uh, race action, all this great race action, but uh, these super high-end best triathletes on the planet uh, choosing to sacrifice early alarms, uh, staying up late, and uh, racing with us here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and look at uh, how this, this series kind of finished out, uh, what the points are going to be, but also some uh, race replays here in just a second. Yeah, so a lot of the women are still coming up. We've seen the 10 uh, women come across the finish line with Paula Finley coming in 10th on today's stage. It looks like Jess Learmont, um 11th, Angela Nath into 12th. And are we into the GC standings? Here's to know. Here's today's results. Uh, just covering off what we've already done, Lucy Charles on the top podium. Yeah, no, the great, great uh, result from Lucy Charles Barkley, 104.02. Uh, for this route is is pretty fast, Sean. That uh, those women certainly were not taking it easy in the lead in uh, to the to the climb up the Alps. So a, a super fast time, just 39 seconds behind Lucy Charles Barkley was Teresa Adam with Melanie Moore having a great race, finishing in third place. And again, 
I do think uh, she's going to move herself into into third uh, once once we figure out the math again, all of our heads are exploding trying to figure it out. Uh, not not my strength for sure, but Ruth Assel with a fourth place finish. I think if you would have told her that last night she'd finish fourth on the top of the Alps, she would have been ecstatic. So amazing performance uh, from Jocelyn, or sorry, from Ruth Assel right in front of Jocelyn McCauley. And let's go and let's see if we've got the GC for the women. And uh, we can uh, take a look and see how on or off our math was and uh, see who finished on the podium. Uh, the women in the first Z Pro Tri Invitational. And it was, I mean, one, we already knew, but Teresa Adams up top, uh, Lucy Charles push, pulls into second place with 132 points, and we've got a tie for third and fourth between Jocelyn McCauley and Melanie Moore. Um, did we have a tiebreaker set up before this? I'm not sure. We'll have to go back and look, but uh, amazing racing there. So close that it comes down to a tie. Uh, for the GC between Macaulay and Moore. Ruth Assel moving up to fifth place. Incredible performance from the new pro and uh, first time pro triathlete, the ZA, pro, uh, ZA Academy winner. So great racing there. But um, yeah, really close there. Jocelyn Macaulay hanging in as Melanie Moore moved up to fourth to tie for third. Yeah, no, that was a, that's crazy. I mean, obviously you can't get any closer than a tie. But Sean, looking at this series, you know, we had a four race series and uh you know different courses that suited different athletes theoretically right uh so it gave everybody a chance to shine those intermediate points uh you know gave some practice at the sprint and uh you know time for everybody to try to to do it on their own or to to get kind of their glory and to to have these athletes battle it out at the end uh up the alp to me was pretty exciting and to see teresa adams certainly she's one that is uh was in control of this series in general and uh, so let's uh, let's look at what happened in the men's GC kind of when it was all said and done. I know we didn't have that math done for you there. So let's take a look and see what uh, what occurred and what the final shakeout was for the men's GC. Craig Taylor won it on top. <laughs> a little bit of a mistake there, but uh, let's get those GC standings up. Um, we know we know Lionel easily took the win today with 145 points, and here's the final series standings. Anthony Costas moves up to second. Mike Phillips, who had a mechanical at the beginning, stuck with it, drug himself up to the top 20 to can maintain his third oh. spot uh, place in the GC standings. Jackson Laundry moving into the top five at fourth spot. So really incredible performance from Jackson Laundry. Did a got better each week and really had a great race up the Alp when he wasn't really expecting to, to perform that, that high there. Uh, Sepp Odin, a little bit of a surprise there, a name we're not too familiar with um, in the, in compared to some of these other ones like Aaron Royal, but amazing performance from Sepp Odin, uh, really powerful, really consistent all race. Um, and look how close it was from five through 10, uh, 96 points, 95, all the way down to 90 points at Braden Curry sitting in 10th. Yeah, that was awesome. I mean, look how tight that ended up being. You know, Ronnie Schildneck ended up in eighth place. But, man, what an upset. Mike Phillips, it uh, pays to stick to it. And that's a guy that would not have rated himself going up the Alp. Uh, but he held on to third place, even though he gave three minutes uh, or more, I think, at the at the time they got to the base of the Alp and was able to scratch enough points together to stay in third place. Uh, get a little bit of a paycheck. So Mike Phillips, that's an amazing performance there. But the two athletes that we kind of expected to finish on top of this series were Lionel Sanders, Anthony Costas. They were in a battle every race, Sean. It was preliminary points. It was finished. They were uh, definitely covering each other. And both of them could not stop talking about how they had to look at the other athlete on today's stage. Uh, so at the end of this series, we had Lionel Sanders for the men take the series as he broke it all apart, making sure he had points whenever he could. And, and the tactician he was, it was all about points for him. He was able to finish out on top with a stage win today. And then it was Teresa Adam, who was dominant in every race across the series. The only race she didn't win was the final one up the Alp at Lucy Charles Barkley snatched away from her. So great performances by Teresa Adam and Lionel Sanders to be the inaugural champions of our first uh, Z Pro Tri Invitational Series. And I can't thank you all enough for joining us uh, and listening in and watching these amazing athletes over this four-week series. Uh, we can't wait to do it again. And for Sean Jefferson, I'm Matt Lieto. Until next time, ride on.